Welcome back to Charlie's Weekend Special. Welcome back to Charlie's Weekend Special. If you didn't see the first two parts, um, that's okay. The first one really didn't matter that much, and the second one was pretty cool, but if you don't watch it, that's okay. And it's the second episode of The Story of Stories, so let me start my video like I'm supposed to. Let me tell you a story about a story. This time it's about Margaret Wise Brown and Clement Hurd's Goodnight Moon, which I love so much that I have as the background on my phone. A lot of this episode is going to be about the people behind the story rather than the story itself, but that's kind of what the first episode was too, so don't worry about it. Margaret Wise Brown was born into a wealthy family, and unfortunately her parents did not address her as much as she would have liked, and so she felt very alone. And as she got older, she didn't really feel like she had ever grown up. And let me get this straight right as we start here. She directly stated that she did not like children. She had a complicated love life and died relatively early due to disease, but she did become a successful publisher in the time that she had and wrote a lot of children's books. Her process was sort of strange, saying that she would write a book in like 25 minutes and then refine it for two years. She also liked to work on a lot of projects at once, and she would be talking to her friends and have like five books that she just wrote. Or at least that's my understanding of it. Still got a little bit of real tea in there before we replace it with water. Um... Her contact with children came largely from a student teaching program where she got to interact with young children, and the wording in Goodnight Moon is heavily based off of how these children communicated. Clement Hurd was the artist behind Goodnight Moon and did many other children's books. Just do a Google image search of him and your brain will be overloaded with nostalgia and beauty. When Goodnight Moon was first released, many large libraries would not accept it. Like I said, Miss Brown based it heavily off of how children communicated, and this was not typically how children's books were written back then. Up to that point, stories for children were largely fairy tales, and Goodnight Moon was not one of those things. And a lot of critics didn't like this, and a lot of libraries didn't like this. They didn't think that it was conducive for growth in children. With a slow start, but eventually picking up, Goodnight Moon sold a lot, and still sells a lot. I think it's 800,000 copies annually. Wow, that's a lot of copies annually. Now, now, dear viewer, you may wonder, what happened with all that money? Margaret Wise Brown did not have children, and did not marry, so where did it go? The money went to a then young man named Albert Clark who was Miss Brown's neighbor, and when he started inheriting the Goodnight Moon money, he started inheriting a lot of money. Sadly, he lived a life of crime, and was eventually estranged by his family. And that's the story of Goodnight Moon and its great green room, which, if you haven't read in a long time, like, click away now, go read that. It's really, really good poetry. And Clement Hurd's graphics for it, even though they had some last-minute additions, were and are horribly artistic, and it's beautiful. So thanks for watching, bye. See you later, you goose. And to all, a good night. Moon. That's how the book ends, also. That is factual.